In the House of Representatives, all 435 seats are being contested throughout the USA. The Democrats currently have 235 congressional seats versus 199 for the Republicans. The Republicans face a tough challenge this year, with 28 of their members retiring, while only six Democrats are choosing not to run for re-election. Some of the retirements include congressmen who have served their congressional district for years. This year, however, even incumbents may have a difficult time getting re-elected, as growing dissatisfaction with Congress handling of issues such as the economy have made voters restless and less likely to vote for an incumbent. Almost $70 million have been spent on congressional campaigns throughout the United States. Staff and volunteers from both presidential campaigns have also worked to help bolster the most fiercely contested congressional campaigns. Some interesting races include the 8th Congressional District of North Carolina, where Republican Robin Hayes is battling Democratic challenger Larry Kissel. In their previous contest, the incumbent Hayes won by only 369 votes. In the 16th Congressional District of Florida, Democratic incumbent Tim Mahoney is struggling against Republican Tom Rooney, whose family owns the Pittsburgh Steelers, an American football team. In the 9th Congressional District of Indiana, incumbent Democratic Baron Hill once again faces Republican Mike Sodrell. This will be the fourth time these two Indiana congressmen have faced one another in the polls. Hill has won two elections, Sodrell won. The Democrats hope to increase their majority in the House, giving them an additional cushion when it comes to voting on the tough issues. Many states in the U.S. allow voters to directly approve or reject legislation. Some states, such as California and Colorado, have over a dozen initiatives on their ballots that voters will have to decide on. Some argue that these initiatives are a good thing because they accurately reflect the will of the people. Others argue that some of these initiatives are so complicated that voters do not really understand what they are voting on. These initiatives can cover a wide range of issues including taxes, health care, education, and government borrowing. For example, in California, voters will have to vote on initiatives to allow borrowing for a high-speed train, renewable energy, and to require farmers to provide a minimum amount of space for chickens. They will also have to decide on requiring a waiting period and parental notification before a minor can have an abortion. Same-sex marriage is a very controversial issue in the United States, and in the states of Arkansas, Arizona, California, Connecticut, and Florida, voters will vote on measures that would define marriage as a union between a man and a woman. In Missouri, voters will decide if English will be the official language for all public business and to restrict the number of casinos in the state. And finally, in Michigan, voters will decide if marijuana can be cultivated for medical purposes and if embry human embryonic stem cell research will be permitted. These are all very tough issues that voters must decide that will have a direct effect on their lives. The youth vote may be critical in this election. Both Obama and McCain have been vigorously wooing voters between the ages of 18 to 29. Organizers from both campaigns have been vigorously registering young voters. Rock the Vote has registered 2.3 million new voters, while other organizations such as Headcount and Declare Yourself are expected to add millions more to the voting rolls. Some predict that the young vote voter turnout may be equal to that in 1972 when 55% of those under 30 years old voted. In 2000, only 40% voted. To encourage young voters to register, voter registration drives have used a mixture of traditional and new techniques, including celebrity endorsements, social networking websites such as Facebook, text messaging, and even video games. Even promotions such as free rock concerts for the college, who registers the most new voters are being offered. New technology has played a key role with both campaigns using the internet to reach out to the youth audience and the 2008 election would be the first election where the mobile phone activists will play a key role in driving young voters to the polls. This year there are 35 Senate contests throughout the United States. The Democratic Party is seeking to improve on their two-seat margin in the Senate and get 60 seats in the Senate. Why is 60 so important? With 60 seats, the Democratic Party will be able to overcome voting procedures that a minority could use to block legislation. It's been over 30 years since a single party has had 60 seats in the Senate. 
With five Senate seats being vacated by retiring Republicans, the Democrats believe they have a shot at this. With this in mind, the candidates in the parties have already spent over $40 million on Senate campaigns this election year. In Minnesota, Republican Senator Norm Coleman faces Democrat Al Franken, a famous comedian and writer. This race is very tight and too close to call. In Louisiana, Democratic Senator Mary Landrieu is battling Republican John Kennedy. Republicans are hoping for a victory in Louisiana in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, which forced many Democratic voters to leave the state. And in North Carolina, two women are in a close race for that state's Senate seat. Republican Senator Elizabeth Dole, wife of former presidential candidate Bob Dole, is running for re-election. Running for the Democrats is Kay Hagan, niece of the late Lawton Childs, a former governor and senator for Florida. This race is extremely close, with the poll showing only a 1% margin between the two candidates.